Mr. Hello. Goyer, such a pleasure talking to you from our, our different voids and pods. And yes, I know. I think that uh, Isaac Asimov would, would enjoy this, that we're discussing his work in this virtual interconnected space. I think that would, would be something that he, he would find kind of funny. Talking about having a foundation, what from your previous work you think that prepared you the most to tackle something as ambitious and, and massive like this project? I think that um, <clears throat> whether it be Batman or Superman or um, even working on the Terminator franchise, I certainly had had the experience of, of bringing something to screen that was revered that had an enormous fan base. I think the one advantage that I have with Foundation is that there had been no iteration of it prior to that, and and specifically that there had been no no visual depiction of it. So the audience of Foundation didn't have an idea in their heads as to what the spaceships would necessarily look like or what the costumes would look like. That was an advantage. The other thing is that I kind of developed a system where before I adapt something, I try to identify what are the core critical elements of it. And so that's something that I did before I even came up with the story is I just wrote down on a legal pad what I thought were the most important characters, the most important philosophies, the most important ideas. And then I presented those to the Asimov estate and I said, did I get it right? Uh, you know, does this feel like the essential core of foundation? And fortunately, the Asimov estate and Robin Asimov, uh, his daughter, felt that I had. And I said, OK, now I'm going to start. Now We can at least agree on what makes Foundation Foundation. Mm -hmm. And talking about those core elements, what do you think are those kind of one or two essential things that you have to, to, to keep? And on the opposite side, a couple elements that, that you saw room for, you know, uh, change or or a different approach well one of the obviously the core elements is is that humanity and history is cyclical that um that if we look to the past the best predictor of future behavior is past behavior and that was absolutely key there's also a cassandra element which is that you have characters warning uh, rigid structures you know rigid empires um that were heading down a wrong path and one of the other core elements is that um, whether or not people are willing to sacrifice something today for a future generation, for our children or the children after, um, nothing is constant except change itself. I mean, those are all the critical ideas. And another one of the critical ideas is that Harry Seldon's capable of predicting the broad movements of history. Uh, with uncanny accuracy. He can't predict your individual lifeline, but he can essentially predict the lifeline of the human race. So in a world where math can kind of chart the destiny of humanity, um, is there free will? Do our actions matter? Or is everything just sort of, you know, following out to plan? Th I think those are the sort of key ideas in Foundation. In terms of changing things, Asimov was writing his trilogy in a post-World War II environment. So the empires that were falling back in the late 40s and the early 50s are different empires than are falling today uh, because Foundation is using science fiction as an allegory to talk about contemporary uh, civilization. I had to ad adapt and update the empires that were falling. So I also said to the Asimov estate, I need to write about Brexit. I need to talk about a post 9-11 world. I need to talk about Me Too, uh, the rise of nationalism, climate change. These are the things that are concerning the world and civilization right now. I could not have predicted a global pandemic, um, although that also is cyclical. Uh, so I would argue that foundation has become even more relevant and prescient uh, in the three years since I started adapting it. Um, it's even more relevant now. Absolutely. In terms of uh, characters and the actors uh, portraying them, um, you have a lot of experience adapting many kinds of different works, but kind of 
in particular, you know, graphic novels, uh, superheroes, and we are dealing with people that are not here to save the day. They are in a way trying to mitigate the, the, the suffering and and they are coming from different places and they are all kind of shades of gray. Can you talk about the, the, the characters and the, the actors that you needed to have for something like this? Is there something that, that they, they share in particular? I think my favorite form of storytelling these days is um, are these sort of big novelistic shows that are happening um, on the streamers. I like Shades of Grey. Um, I think it's more, you know, because Shades of Grey reflect reality. Uh, sometimes good people do bad things and bad people do good things. And I think it's, as a viewer, it's exciting to watch a character grow and change, fall from grace, or maybe redeem themselves. Um, I like the messiness. I like the complexity of that. And everyone is the hero of their own story. So it was important to me that in the case of the Empire, they're, to show them being absolutely monstrous, but also show stories and storylines in which we feel empathy for them. And, and I, I like, I'm hoping that the audience feels a little confused about where their empathies lie. There's certainly with Harry Seldon, he can be viewed as a hero. He can also be viewed as a, an anti-hero. And he also, to some people, can be viewed as a villain. I think that's interesting. Talking about, and final question, the future, do you have like a room full of concept art and plans and notes for like <laughs> seven more seasons? And what is the, the legacy that you hope for this show to, to have? I'm enormously proud of what we've accomplished with the show. I think it was very hard during the pandemic. I, I like that it's fundamentally a message of hope and, and faith in human ingenuity. I know that that's what kept us going during the pandemic while we were making it. Apple, when I first pitched them the show, uh, understandably, it was a big investment and they wanted to know that I was writing towards something, that I wasn't just making it up as I went along because even Asimov himself didn't finish the foundation story. He never got to the end of the thousand year journey. So I presented a roadmap for eight seasons, for 80 episodes, uh, an ending. It's not to say that we can't shift and adjust or shimmy along the way, but we are writing towards something. I do have an idea of all the broad strokes for all of the seasons and where the characters end up. And I think that's important when you're embarking on an adaptation like this. Awesome. Looking forward to see the whole story. Thank you so much for your time and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.